Well, hello everyone and welcome to the Tech Chit Chat Show. This is episode four. My name is Ken from Northern Viking Everyday and Northern Viking Explorer on YouTube. And I'm here with my co-host, Steven, a programmer. You can find him on Twitter at 8 Warrior or Steven Loney on YouTube. How are you today, Steven? I'm doing good, thank you. Good, you, well, you made it this morning. This is our I, take two <laughs> from yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I guess um, we've had a little bit, of, little bit of trouble trying to get this one recorded, but uh, we're getting there. Yeah, yeah. Internet difficulties yesterday. I think all my neighbors are Bitcoin mining and used up the whole bandwidth for the neighborhood. So um, we got that fixed up. You threw your pen in your coffee yesterday. It was just a bad start. So we're doing take two today. <laughs> yes, we'll get <laughs> awesome. There. Do you have your coffee today? Or are you on the? Um, I have my placeholder coffee. I have I have water this morning. It'll do. Water. Well, I'm on coffee number so. two, maybe more. I'm not sure. I can't. I like <laughs> <that too. laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, so episode four. We made it to episode four. We've got a bunch of stuff we want to talk about, and maybe we should just dive in. We're going to be talking about Stadia to start out. Oh, lovely Stadia. So You're Google Stadia. Google stops making in-house games for Stadia. What's this all about there, Stephen? Uh, yeah, so it looks like they have um, disbanded their in-house development of games. So no no uh, direct game straight from Google for their Google Stadia platform, which doesn't sound... Yeah, it, is, it doesn't sound like very good because it makes you kind of think, are they thinking long-term the same thing for the whole for the whole platform? This is, now, this doesn't mean that the whole platform as a whole is shutting down, but just... Just their in-house game development. Um, okay, so that would be the equivalent of like Nintendo's, like their in-house games for Nintendo would be like Mario and Zelda type of thing. That's yeah, yeah. It, so, so Google is trying to make their own Mario's and Zeldas in-house, and but they've scrapped that idea, and so now they're only continuing with like third-party titles and stuff. So, okay. and so if they so if they want any exclusives at this point, they'll have to like buy them outright from studios and work agreements with studios to get any like first party titles or anything so gotcha yeah i know um the stadia has kind of been plagued with controversy a little bit as well i know a lot of people have yeah. struggled with i guess it's the latency of their gaming and um yeah everybody now wants to have <laughs> i mean every millisecond means a lot if, especially when you're starting to get into competitive gaming i know it's probably not on the stadia for competitive yeah. gaming but um people start to notice it especially if you don't have a very good internet connection have you have you yeah. tried out the stadia at all or no i haven't i haven't tried it out i'm i'm not the target market for it i gotcha i'm one of the people that likes my latency and and i don't want to have yeah. any like input so if if i lived down in the states next to like a a server or something right there i can you know an option but up where i'm at here i i it's not for me yeah, so I already I have a gaming rig and stuff. So I haven't actually tried the Stadia, but I have I have used their um, internet speed checker to see how how if my internet would qualify, and it was actually more than than they expected. Um, right, but it was they do have their own internet speed checker. If you want to go try it out, yeah, I'm sure if you just Google it, um, it would come up for you. But, yeah, the the uh, I haven't used Stadia, but I did recently use. Um, uh, was playing the the Steams Valves um, remote play with each other. Okay, I was actually actually very impressed with that. So that's not Google Stadia, but I've been been impressed with. Um, I was actually shocked, like kind of impressed at how quick it was. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, Steams remote play, if anyone doesn't know, is allows you to play a single player game or like a local local co op game or multiplayer game. Just one person has to own the game, and then one person's effectively streaming the video and the inputs back and forth with another player and so um i was playing that with somebody it was working really well i was actually very impressed with it so i mean mm -hmm. i guess i sh could, shouldn't be so hard on google stadia because if it's even faster than what steam like i don't know how it compete compares but yeah in some in some contexts in some situations it makes sense like yeah my friend doesn't have this game and it doesn't we can just play together somehow it's mm -hmm. better than nothing um but as a platform to make this my dedicated gaming platform everything goes through google stadia that's yeah, it's not not for me, but yeah. uh, it could be, the tech could be good. Mm -hmm. I think I, there's definitely room for improvement. I think about 
yesterday when we started to try and record this um, this video yesterday, I wouldn't have actually been able to play Stadia at the time because my internet connection was so bad because of all right. the, the coin miners on my yeah, street. The Bitcoin miners out there, <laughs> blame the Bitcoin. It has but, nothing to do with it. So had I tried, had I been wanting to play games yesterday morning, I don't think it would have even worked for me. So that's, I mean, one thing that's definitely a pro with consoles or, or PCs, maybe not online gaming, but at least you could still play the game. Um, yeah. If you're playing offline type of thing. Right. So, yeah, I mean, there's definitely improvement. Everything's always getting better. Internet speeds are, are getting better. I know we talked about last week, um, Google, their, what was it, a two megabit per, or um, two megabit per second uh, speeds that were coming out, or gigabit per second, I should say. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So megabit per second, that's <laughs> gigabit, <laughs> gigabit per second um, streams that were coming out. And right. I mean, you get that kind of speed, you're going to have no problem gaming at all. So, so it's just overall at the end of the day, it's like with, with Google sh shuttering down the studios in house, it, it doesn't show a great sign of confidence on their part in the platform long term. Mm -hmm. And Google has yeah. been known for starting up programs and canceling them quite often. And they're a big company. They're allowed to experiment, but it, it doesn't mm -hmm. exude a great lot of confidence in their own platform. And that being said, they've had some winners too. So you look at YouTube oh, and all that yeah. kind of stuff, like they've had so many yeah. things that have done so well. Um, I mean, this is just yeah. another one of their experiments. I mean, moving on to um, experiments that work and don't work is actually kind of our next topic. Um, <laughs> so I, I don't want to say that this was a flop, but um, Google has made some changes with their Google Play Music. I, you might not, you might have noticed it's not really available anymore. Um, if you purchased music. Um, you need to move it over to YouTube music, which is something that I came across um, before Christmas. All of a sudden, I knew I had purchased some Christmas music on the Google Play Music Store. And I realized that because it's shutting down, um, you need to actually transfer all of your music or download it to be able to use it kind of going forward. So um, otherwise, you're going to be losing it. So I, I kind of I'll bring this up here um, because Google will be deleting your music if you don't transfer it over to YouTube or download it. So um, kind of a, a warning to y'all, <laughs> if you have music right. that you purchased, it's definitely something that you might want to go transfer over to YouTube music or download for sure. Do you have any music on Google Play Music, Stephen? No, I don't know if I ever use Google Play Music. I might have briefly, okay. but I've, I've been on Spotify for the last couple or few years. So. Mm -hmm. um, but is, has Google Play, has it been quite, like, I don't, even, I don't even know how popular it's been. I don't know. I mean, we've bought kind of several albums on there over the years. I guess now people have moved more into streaming. So there were actually albums that I owned, um, a few Christmas right. albums and different things. So I wanted to make sure that I didn't lose those going forward. Um, I mean, some people may have spent thousands and thousands of dollars buying stuff on there. And to just lose it all would be would be right. um, quite tragic. I think it's right now the date is set to February 24th, 2021, that you have to have your music moved to YouTube music. So that date is coming up in a couple of weeks, so or less than a couple of weeks. So, or I can't do my math, but around a couple of weeks. <laughs> so, so make sure if you if you have that, do that. Yeah, um, so with the with the YouTube music now, which is the, the, the new thing, right, where they're moving to, mm -hmm. Does it allow you to out to outright purchase albums as well? Then still, like, is it still? That's a good question. I haven't played with it too much. I think it's I think it's trying to compete more with Spotify and those services where you pay a monthly subscription. But right. when I look, move my music over, I was able to access it and listen to it on there, ad right. free, etc. So, um, right. yeah, I'll have to play with it more, but. Yeah, I think they're, I mean, if you haven't used YouTube music, it's pretty cool. Um, I think it's pulling most of the music off of YouTube video, I guess, but the creators are, of course are still getting royalties off that from my understanding, but it's right. a, it's definitely a change. I mean, we've seen um, how many people buy albums anymore versus even if it's a digital album, we thought buying MP3s was the thing, but now you're paying for a streaming service where you listen to music or you're yeah. using a streaming service where you listen to ads. So 
it's kind of an interesting thing, dynamic how things have changed in not too many years. So would you have preferred to continue to use Google um, Music or do you like the new plot, new system? That That's a good question. I, I liked Google Music. I think I've always, okay, now you're going to call me old or something here, but I've actually prefer buying albums rather than paying for a streaming service. Um, I don't know. That's just me in general, but I guess, I mean, I've never loved subscription services because, and I think that stems from they're starting to become too many of them. You might have Netflix, you might have Disney plus, you might have, I mean, we have a television package. Um, you might have, like, there's so many, there's Peacock. I just saw Paramount plus on the Super Bowl. There was right. ads for that. So, um, you might have NHL channel or whatever. So all of these services all of a sudden are starting to add up. And originally there were the intent of these services was to save you money. And now they're starting to add up to more than you might've been paying before you cut the cable type of thing. So, right. I don't know. Yeah. It's a interesting concept. I, I kind of thought it was funny the other day. I saw all these um, web links of how to watch the Super Bowl in 2021. And it's like, well, <laughs> don't you just turn on your TV and watch it on your TV. But so many people have cut the cord now on their cable vision that they right. can't even watch the Super Bowl. And I, I turn on my TV and it's included with the basic thing and it's got on five different channels. So um, uh, not five different channels, but on our Canadian network and the American network. So I don't know, it's it's just kind of an interesting concept that we're, I kind of feel like we've moved backwards in a way that something as simple as watching the Super Bowl isn't easy anymore if you don't have- <laughs> Right, cable. right. So, yeah. But uh, yeah, I guess we'll just keep rolling on here. Um, the next one was kind of interesting. I know you and I, many years ago, and my kids even have used this, is or played this game, Goldeneye. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. Goldeneye, yeah. Yeah, I um, definitely played that. I know we used to play against each other um, quite a bit. You could do the split screen mode, I believe, on Goldeneye. And we'd play I, against each other. I even uh, played this with a buddy for, for his steak party. We, I brought it in 64 in controllers and we played like GoldenEye until like, yeah, anyways, some might think that's lame, but it was actually a ton of fun. So, um, yeah. you know, definitely played this game. So, yeah, yeah. so. Go ahead. It looks like, it, it looks like it's uh, remaster has leaked about this um, for originally, uh, it was supposed to originally be uh, developed for the Xbox Live Arcade, and yeah, have you checked this out, Ken? Yet have you managed to? Uh, yeah, I had a quick look at this. So leaks have come out of some people playing the. Um, is it an emulated version? I think of of the Xbox 360 right version yeah. of GoldenEye. So there was apparently a lot of. Um, red tape and rights holders and everything and it never never yeah. got launched and i think it would have done extremely well um, yeah it, you, i mean it, you can yeah. google search the gameplay it looks pretty cool and it's yeah. on youtube um it's kind of sad because i would have loved to have played this game and uh, just never happened because I, of all the red tape so it's kind of an interesting thing for sure and, and to think it would have been really cool so uh, apparently in this version like it it had the single player uh, remastered and has even the local multiplayer, but it didn't have any um, online multiplayer enabled as of yet in the in the version that was leaked. Um, but yeah, I agree. This thing could have done well if it was put out there, even without online multiplayer. If it had been added later or something, like I think a lot of people mm -hmm. would have would probably still be playing it today. This version, um, yeah, because I'd I'd want to keep the version of it. I think like it's just for these, yeah. And and the update it seems pretty cool. So they didn't do. Um, uh, a cool thing apart, uh, about that version of the game was that at any point you could toggle between the original graphics and the updated graphics. You could, okay. just to you could toggle a button, it would take you back to the N64 graphics, you press a button, it takes you to a more modern. And they didn't do a crazy, it's not a crazy over the top remaster, it's just like mm -hmm. a fresh layer on top that just looks, yeah, it looks better. Um, but they maintain all the original gameplay and like level designs and everything, it just made it look a yeah. little more modern. So Yeah. Yeah, it'd be kind of cool. I like I I don't recall any recent 
versions of any James Bond games. I feel like I played a few of them on the PS2 back in the day. Um, and I, I mean, with the James Bond, well, the date keeps getting pushed back because of everything going on in the world. So I think it's later this year now, the new James Bond, but it's too bad. I would love to see another James Bond game, especially on the new consoles. You could probably make some pretty cool levels and pretty cool games. Um, yeah, so that. The, the James Bond, the game that eventually did get released for the 360 ended up apparently didn't, doing okay. Um, it wasn't like a, a direct remake. Um, so there still is like interest in the franchise. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah it'll be kind, interesting. It's, sad. it's sad, but it'll be interesting to see where, where things go in the future because I think that's definitely a cool game and that if, everybody's if any, missing. <laughs> and if anybody really wants to try like a modern version of that, like Steam, uh, on Valve, if you if you own like Half-Life 2 or anything, you can get like um, a mod that someone said like a uh, a remake of GoldenEye in the, okay. in the Source Engine. So if people really want to get their hands on something like that, check out Half-Life and find the, the um, GoldenEye mod for it and stuff. And cool. You might be happy with that. So, Cool. Awesome. Okay. This one, when you sent me this article for the next one, I was like, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> and I find it so exciting. <laughs> are, are you trying to store your data in cheese? Like it just was like, what are you talking about here, Steven? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tape yeah, cartridges. So, that well, was, I had that with the, like the Commodore or Vic 20 or something had like a tape, <laughs> a tape deck. <laughs> well, I'm I'm still trying to look for one for my Commodore. I got to find one. But yeah, um, so I was just thinking the other day. I'm like, okay, so how are how are these server companies and these like where they store all this information like for YouTube and stuff? How are they storing all this information? Because I know like with my hard drives, I know storage got pretty good, but you got to have like a lot of hard drives and stuff to store. So I'm like, how is it feasible? So I came across this article about the and reading the article, I realized that. They're still using, it seems to be for possibly majority of data centers out there are still using tape for mm. actual storage because it's still um, the most cost effective form of storage. Like it actually can hold the most capacity. So, and it looks like Fuji here is by 2025 looking to have like, I think at least, um, yeah, petabyte, if not more, I can't, I think, but at least a petabyte, yeah. A at least a petabyte, petabyte of storage of st into a single tape drive. <laughs> yeah, so like that's a, that's a way that seems way more um, cost effective than a bunch of like hard drive platters, um, yeah. or S even SSDs because it's just the price of those and stuff. And so, and this is probably so this could, let's, yeah. can we uh, just let everyone know who's listening how big a petabyte is? It's a, mm. am I correct in saying it's a thousand terabytes? That's right. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, like. This drive here is a one terabyte, one terabyte hard drive yeah. backup drive. So a thousand of these. Right. So that's huge. In a single tape. So as you can imagine, that's that's much more cost effective for data centers. And and so, yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, yeah, in, in regards to performance on the performance stuff, I don't know. But for data centers, they have their servers going to have tons of RAM. And you try to get stuff onto the RAM of the server and you got to get it off the off the storage and so there's all these things that these data centers can do but like this is apparently still i think the most co cost effective way to do storage yeah. in large data centers which a lot of people may not even think you're like really they're still using tape but at the end of the day that's the most efficient form still now would they be using this for backup of all their information or for their main information because uh, to me a tape you're like i think back to vhs where oh it has to rewind and fast forward like it just doesn't seem quick and for my Google search, when I type in how to fold a burrito, I feel <laughs> like I feel like this would my computer would spin for like ten minutes while the tape rewinds. Like, are they using it for backup, maybe, or is it? Yeah, so I'm not sure exactly, but um, but theorizing in my head, like, so I don't know this. I don't know the speed of of the tape. I don't know what it is. It could be fast. Mm -hmm. It could be fast today. We might yeah. just are doing that. We don't know. But even say that even if it was slow. Um, what it could be effectively could be for backup. So let's say that you have YouTube, for example, and they have a billion videos, but let's say that a hundred million of those videos only get watched like once every 10 years. 
Mm -hmm. So YouTube would be safe to, to put those never watched videos onto some slow backup storage. And as soon as anything that is watched can be then, then stored onto a more faster uh, storage format. So if anything is relevant, it can then be handled off to a, a more relevant storage for a while. And then anything that, that's gotcha. not watched for like a year or two could be put back on something that's not needing speed. because That's slower. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's probably like millions of videos on YouTube that are not watched daily. Mm -hmm. And those things, YouTube, can you run an algorithm? Like, yeah, let's put those onto the slow storage. No one's watching them. And if someone does watch them, well, it's not going to hurt them to wait like 10 seconds of buffering for that addition. Like, let's just worst case scenario. Yeah. Um, no, for sure. So they can learn how to fold a burrito or something. It's like, no one's going to die. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I say that is you always tease me when I'm making, going to make a how to fold a burrito video because there's, if you go on YouTube and there's, like actual videos search it there's a lot of views on how to fold a burrito so um if you want to know how to fold a burrito you can go watch yeah. that on youtube i didn't make it <laughs> but my burrito always falls apart so i should probably watch it <laughs> <laughs> awesome yeah tape drives who knew i don't know they're still around <laughs> to me it's like storing your your stuff in cheese but all right let's move on to the next one Intel pushes back on Apple's M1 processors. Is there a little bit of a controversy brewing here? Well, it Apple more recently launched their M1 processor laptops, devices, and things, which is pretty much pretty much this like phone processor. I shouldn't say that, but like it's it with the um the, sorry the M1 processors are are the ARM based processors, which are not Intel based. So up until this point, um, well, even actually, I shouldn't say up to this point. Many years ago, Intel, um, sorry, Apple was using PowerPC. And then at a certain point, they moved over to Intel. They've been using Intel for all their like computers and laptops and stuff. Um, at least predominantly. I'm not sure if they used AMD for... But anyways, they've been predominantly using Intel. And they recently shifted to ARM-based devices for like everything now. So now not just their phones, but also their laptops and all that right mm -hmm. and the performance has been really good on them and like the the power uh, efficiency is great the performance has been good better than people expected i think like it kind of is better than what i expected so yeah. apple has now i think guess felt the need to kind of push back because this kind of threatens their mobile chip division yeah and so they've put out a graph uh, of some uh st statistics of how their device perform performs against now them. this is intel that's put out these graphs i think showing how their sorry yeah process yeah so intel is saying this is their i7 11 85 g7 16 gigabytes versus the m1 16 gigabytes so they're they're kind of trying to show how their chip is far out performing um the the m1 chip so it's kind of yeah. interesting definitely it, it seems to be outperforming like in some areas uh and then it seems to, to trade blows in some and then mm -hmm. well in others like here um, like these ones are very similar well so this um, is the gaming this is the gaming performance oh gaming performance oh, gotcha oh this is how it compares yeah they're saying that the m1 chips won't even play some of the games here so i think that's what's that far Far Cry New Dawn, Hitman Two. No, and yeah, but but check check the last one on the on the right of the of the graphic. What's that one called? Check it. On the this one here. No, 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 no. Or on the, on the, the the last one, the three dots. It's oh, countless, countless, countless others. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of yeah. a kind of a gotcha. little bit of a um. They're they're trying to kind of push it. And be like, well, if you want to do any kind of gaming, don't get a don't get a Apple device, which isn't anything new. No, I mean, and I don't. I don't think that people buy an Apple device to um, game for the most part. But I mean, it's nice if you're paying two, three thousand dollars or whatever for a computer that you could casually game if you wanted to. Um, yeah. That you don't have to go buy a console just to play the one game you might be interested in. So, yeah, it's definitely an interesting concept. I, I don't. I mean, yeah, I, I think we all there's always been the the apple versus pc debate and i mean yeah. uh, i don't know i think uh it's definitely interesting that they're kind of pushing intel's pushing back on apple i think 
I don't know if they felt threatened or, or whatnot, but yeah. To me, it doesn't seem like, I'm not sure. Cause for, for me, like I'm not an Apple, big Apple fan, but I, I my observation of people who are Apple fans is one, they're not into it for gaming. And two, it's, it's more about overall like battery life performance ratio rather than beef raw. Like it's more. And three, they like to sit in Starbucks and work on their computers. <laughs> no, <Yes>. no offense, <laughs> but I, you don't see very many PCs in a Starbucks. Do you um, see a lot of, you see, see a lot of, of Apple users oh, at Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> I, and don't get me wrong. I use PCs, but I like Starbucks as well. So <laughs> <laughs> I call it the Apple dumpling gang. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's gonna know what that means except for like no. Well, it's an people. old. You can Google it. The, there's an old Disney show. I think probably from the 70s with Don Knotts, but um, maybe the 60s. I don't know. It's old. <laughs> and, but it's just I. I kind of always laugh when I see, you know, seven MacBooks at the table and in, in uh, Starbucks and no PCs. So kind of funny. So that's <laughs> the I Apple went, Dumpling Gang. <laughs> I went there with my Windows laptop. My you know. Well, you were, you were just telling me a story yesterday about the guy with the big PC. Yeah, so uh, a while back, probably about a year and a half ago now, it was before stuff kind of got weird in lockdown. Um, I was at a, a, a coffee house in Canada here called uh, Tim Hortons, and a guy brought his whole PC in, like desktop PC, with <laughs> like like monitor, keyboard, plugged it into a wall, had his whole desktop home PC at a coffee shop and I was just like, wow, that is not what I expected to see. And I'm like, and this is, he's just, yeah, it was interesting. He had the whole, why buy a laptop when you can just bring your whole computer? So, <laughs> well, okay. I'm going to, when I edit this, I'm going to throw up this picture because this is Tim Hortons as well. Um, you probably, I'm going to, I'll put it on top here. Um, I took a picture last year of some guy who pulled his tractor right up to the front of Tim Hortons as well and parked it right in front. So yeah, welcome to Canada. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Come get, and if you haven't heard of Tim Hortons, it's probably the biggest coffee chain here in Canada. You, uh, so that's where you go here in Canada. You can roll up the rim to win. You roll up the rim and win stuff. Well, I don't know if they're going to do that this year, but yeah. Welcome to Canada, Tim Hortons. <laughs> Yeah. Tractors and computers, PCs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe it's the same guy. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, let's roll on to this one here. I thought this was cool when I read it. Um, let me just pull up the article here as well. So, Pixel phones, and I don't know if this is necessarily new, but Google's Pixel phones are going to be able to read your heart rate with their cameras on the phone. So from my understanding, you'll be able to just push your thumb against the camera and it'll be able to tell your, your heart rate, as well as the camera, if you hold it up and look at someone, it's gonna be able to detect how much you're breathing. So it can tell your, um, I don't know what you call that, your breathing rate, I'm not a doctor, but that's kind of cool. And I, I mean, not even just the being able to check your heart rate, I could see this technology being used in other places as well. Um, I mean, it's not easy sometimes to find a heart rate if you're doing this, like if you right. can just put a, I mean, f finger on a camera and see what the heart rate is, or you're, you go for a walk or a run or whatever you're gonna do and you just push your finger against it. I don't know, maybe the, maybe the camera will become your fingerprint sensor on your phone as well. Oh, that's a good point, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't know. Any, any thoughts on this one? I thought it was kind of cool. It's, uh, I mean, I guess so. I guess it's, ex it's cool. I, I'm not, I don't, for personally, I'm not, a, I don't need my phone to do this. Um, it's not why it's I just another phone. perk that they're adding in your phone. Honestly, it's another perk. But the one thing I thought about, so if you're able to read the respiratory rate of, uh, somebody by viewing them with a camera, are people, are you going to be going into like job interviews and have people like pointing cameras at you with like respiratory information? <laughs> it's like, it's like, you know, well, don't, we laugh, but like, seriously, I think someone out there is going to do it. They'll be like, his breathing is high. He's, he's a liar. Like, we don't want this guy. You know, like, I don't we're know. We're turning the camera into a lie detector test. Yeah. It's just like, yeah. you know, yeah, someone asks you a question. And they're looking at all the perspiration and they're, yeah. 
<laughs> you know, and then someone asks a question, they're like, why did your breathing change? You know, it's like, how do you know my breathing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. So, I mean, the technology is cool. I think it, there's good uses for it, but I mean, also, mostly yeah. for the exer exercise end of thing, but I guess it could yeah. be used as well. <laughs> and, yeah, it, it's cool. It's a cool extra feature, but you're right. Could they also change the camera into like a fingerprint? But at the same time, that would allow props so easily for like falsifying fingerprints and stuff too. Like they already have a problem with that. Um, yeah. I don't know if you want to use it for security reasons. Well, that's true. Like if you're, I mean, if your phone got hacked by who knows who, I'm not going to name any names. Um, oh. <laughs> not that I know anyone anyway, but like, could they put some, some software on your phone that you don't know about that steals your thumbprint? Well, yeah. And I, that's where you don't want, I wouldn't be too worried about this. I don't, I doubt this would be used for thumb, thumbprint because it, I don't think it would be practical for that. But I was just thinking this would be good for like, I like the virtual doctors and stuff. Mm -hmm. like to have a virtual doctor and they just point it at you and do the stuff and you're able to keep your heart beat and your respiratory stuff over, you know, yeah. that kind of stuff. That, that makes total yeah. sense. Um, but well, and the new smartwatches are like, they're starting to get all sorts of different medical, right. I don't even know what they're called, but different things that sensors. And I know they've had heart rate for a long time, but all sorts of heart monitoring, diff different things as well. So, um, yeah. You guys are all going to be like, that guy doesn't know what he's talking about when it comes to medical. <laughs> <laughs> I will admit, I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to medical. So don't, you can, I mean, you can type in the comments, that guy doesn't know what he talks about, he's talking about when it comes to medical. <laughs> and I will totally agree with you. <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah, that's kind of a, a cool thing for sure. Um, we have a question of the day that we wanted to bring up for you guys and it's, do you have any music that you need to transfer from Google Play Music? So whether it's downloading it or sending it over to YouTube Music. I mean, like I mentioned before, it could be a lot of music for some of you. It might be one album for some of you. I only had a few. Um, we'd love to hear about it in the comments. Do you have any music and um, are you worried about this? So write that in the comments section below. We'd love to hear about that. Um, yeah, any other final thoughts today for episode four there, Stephen? I'm just glad we got today done, to be honest, after this yeah. <laughs> being the second after day trying to film it. Yeah, <laughs> just and you get didn't to the put, end. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even put your pen into your coffee or your water, so. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Like, yeah. Awesome. Well, that was episode four of the Tech chit chat show and uh thank you so much for listening and watching again we are available on youtube as well as many what podcasting platforms go check us out and listen to us remember to like and subscribe and until next time take care <laughs>